I'd like to call to order the Plan and Zone meeting of today, November 19th. I would like to ask everybody in attendance to please turn off your cell phones. It could interfere with our audio recording. We'll start off with our public hearing. Roll call, please. Schneider is excused. Lammers. Present. Meds excused. Johnson. Here. Tallman here. Ingram. Present. Connell is excused. Hepner. Here. Bransgard. Here. Reinhardt's. Here. Manus. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. First item of business, old business, public hearing case number REZ 19-11. Is there any discussion, staff, since it's been no, related uh, to <clears throat> December 3rd to be held open? Right. The uh, um, petitioner, first of all, apologized for missing the last meeting, but also had a conflict for uh, today's meeting and in discussion with him as well as the chair of the PNZ, uh, we, we feel it's best to just continue the, continue the hearing to the December 3rd meeting. We did send out a um, courtesy notice to the property owners within 200 feet, uh, letting them know that uh, there would, it would not be on the agenda today. Thank you, Matt. We we'll move on to new business, public hearing for case REZ 19-12 is a request of BT Bridge LC to rezone 27.68 acres MOL, the property located at 8228 North Fairmont Street from L I-1 Light Industrial to I-2 Heavy Industrial. Brandon? Yeah, I just wanted to um, let you know that the petitioners requested that the item be tabled uh, wants to discuss potential issues with adjacent property owners prior to uh, public hearing being held. Um, it is up to the discretion of the commission. Um, we did not have uh, sufficient time to provide notice to the surrounding owners, so um, we would still um, you know, need to open the public hearing, but um, it is up to your discretion whether we hold the public hearing or not. I would like to open the public hearing and and listen to staff's comments at this time. Sure. And if that case, if there's anybody that is present or the petitioner would be present and wish to discuss at this time, I anticipate, I'm not making a prediction other than I anticipate that the commission will extend this, but I would still like to open up the meeting at this time to see what you have to offer. All right, um, there's the description of the case. Um, so the, the purpose or the request for the rezoning um, on the application stated that um, the request was being made in order to put a materials production plant uh, on the site and um, do some fabrication on the property. Um, at the neighborhood meeting last night, um, it was clarified that um, the property owner doesn't intend to establish these uses uh, that they're wanting to improve the marketability of the site and um, they don't have um, any plans currently for the site uh, other than removing some of the structures and grading the site. Uh, this is general location uh, map. Uh, this is off of Fairmont, just off of Northwest uh, Boulevard, um, the former Wacky Waters site uh, as it's commonly known, um, just north of Interstate 80. The uh, comprehensive plan shows uh, future land use of industry, um, which aligns with uh, the proposal. It's uh, a general description or definition for um, the industry classification for land use. Um, it's currently zoned I-1. Um, you can see the surrounding properties to the north and the east are also I-1 um, with some ag zoning to the, um, to the west and just south of 80. Uh, here are the definitions for each of those zoning districts. Um, the main difference between light and heavy industrial is that heavy industrial permits um, more uh, outdoor activity, um, which may uh, include um, some outdoor storage. Um, it may uh, have you know, uh, external effects, uh, environmental effects like smoke, noise, uh, glare, and vibration. Um, so that makes it a more intense, uh, intense use. Uh, some of the um, 
bulking uh, differences, there this would establish a minimum lot size. Um, so if they were to subdivide the property, they would be limited to um, a 10,000 square foot uh, minimum um, for the lot area. Also a minimum lot width would be established. Um, it would also increase um, some of the setbacks uh, for the rear setback from 15 to 25 feet. And um, it would have at least a 15 foot uh, interior side setback. Uh, just another comparison of I-1 to I-2. Um, the list on the left um, is uses that are permitted in I-1 but not in I-2. So they would be um, giving up the right to establish those uses on the left um, in exchange for um, acquiring um, the, the rights to uh, the um, uses on the right. Probably most um, in particular would be interested in that industrial general, which includes um, activities uh, that, that I described before, that outdoor storage, um, you know, equipment moving out, outdoors. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the possible issues uh, identified sort of up front would be the prop property is located along a gateway into the community, so that's something to take into consideration. But then also the environmental, potential environmental impacts to surrounding property owners. And um, just depending on how we move forward, um, those are the meeting dates, and I'll take any questions that you might have. Thank you, Brandon. At this time, commissioners, do you have any questions of staff? Seeing none, thank you, Brandon. Thank you. At this time, I will open up the floor to the petitioner if he or she would like to step forward. If not, we will move on to open discussion. Last call. Please identify yourself. I'm Bo Perkins, Hawkeye, Bo Perkins, Hawkeye Paving. Um, we had acquired the property last year. Um, there not much has it really gone on up there. I've been by it. Uh, we've been, a lot of the facilities are still rented out to the city of Davenport for their fire training still. And uh, Scott Community College used the facility up until a few months ago. So we, none of our activities really taken place yet as far as cleaning the area up. By the end of the year, it should look a lot better. It should be more cleaned up. Uh, the grading will start to happen for, uh, and uh, our plan originally when we set up, wanted to get to I-2 was because we had been in contact with a, a certain owner who wanted to put a facility there, uh, ready mix. And so we were talking to them. We said we'd, we'd need to switch the zoning. So we figured we'd get it started. And then uh, those talks fell apart. And uh, we just thought we'd continue on with it because most of the people that are interested in an area that size, if we were to get it to one owner, um, are more of an I-2 use than an I-1. It's, it's 30 acres is quite a bit of land. Uh, so we were think we would get it done now. But uh, after last night's meeting, was we just had our first resident meeting last night. And there were some concerns from the property owners to the north. So we uh, talked to them today. Um, there are people we do business with, too. So we talked to them today and said, if there's concerns, let's table this until we can work together and um, so that was that was the reason for tabling. We just want to work together and make sure everyone address everyone's concerns because the properties could go together as well. So for future use um, with the road access and everything. So that was the reason for the delay. So we just asked to leave it open. And I I, I guess I'm we're still working with uh, Brandon on as far as how long we can table it and stuff. Now that we've gotten it started, but how long it takes us to work things out. So we're just trying to work together to make sure we don't have any issues going forward with it. So. I guess it's our fault not discussing with them sooner, but we didn't know there would be an issue. So as soon as we discovered there was, we said, let's let's hold on this thing and go from there. Just a minute. Commissioner Tallman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You kind of hit on my question about the how much time you would need um, by having this table. Any any idea? I, I think we would know in a few months as, as far as uh, future, as, as how we would work together and, stuff and know whether we would just drop it or continue. But if I think we would get a, a month even would help Okay. Because it's, it's a busier time now, so when I say a month, it's this, this time of year. It's really two months is to get <coughs> much work done. So. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions of the petitioner? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody in the audience like to step forward and speak either in opposition or in in uh, in uh, agreement with the petitioner? Okay, 
If anybody in the audience would like to step forward and speak either in opposition or agreement with the petitioner, now is your opportunity. Now, I will say that if the commission votes to table this, you will have another opportunity along with the night that we vote on it, you will have an opportunity to speak then also. I'm Cindy Armstrong and um, we own property that is up against that too. But um, no, we had a really nice meeting last night, but I guess my question is, is okay, so it's tabled, but then it still goes forward in a couple of months, or how does that work? Okay, the procedure will be, depending on what the commission votes as far as a duration of tabling, it will come back to a similar meeting as tonight where we will discuss it again. The petitioner will should be here to answer questions. We will have a full open discussion. Um, staff may have some additional information to provide. At that time, once everything's been discussed, we will close the public hearing. Staff will take the information back, and then roughly two weeks, whenever our next session is, it'll come back to us, and that time you'll have another opportunity to discuss it, and we will vote yay or nay to send it on to council with a either agreeing with what staff brings to us. You know, they may come to us saying, here's our conditions, we're in favor of this, or here's our opposition, we're denying this. We would then determine whether we agree with staff or disagree with staff and send it on to city council. Okay. So you will have two more opportunities to come before this okay. commission. Would you like me to explain anything about the property that it's your opportunity um, now. You can just, do it. We have the property that's right next to it, and it is uh, in zoned light industry. Um, it is for sale, but at the same time, there is a covenant on that property. So uh, we had a really nice meeting with them last night. So I, I don't know what else to kind of say right now. We didn't want um, any of the property, you know, devalued. As far as that goes, um, we were we're not willing at this point f right now for the, our property to be zoned in a one two. Um, we've always wanted to kind of take care of that area out there that we don't you know mm -hmm. we had no plans for that anyway. So that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank. Would anybody else like to step forward and speak at this time? Commissioners, any questions of the petitioner or of staff at this time? Commissioner Manus. Um, Matt or Brandon, I just wondered, do we have a need for more of this heavy industrial zoning or do we have adequate zoning already in the area that's projected under the comprehensive plan and the zoning? I think that's a, that's a good question. I think one of the things that we can do uh, uh, before the next meeting is to come up with an esti estimate of how much uh, I two land we have in the community. Um, it wouldn't be. It should be fairly straightforward using GIS. I'm turning to my tech guy who can kind of help us out with that. But that's a good question. And if and if I'm uh, since I'm speaking right now, I would ask a question of the commission. Um, if you do choose to table uh, the public hearing, uh, would you like to see uh, a, the item on the regular agenda for action also? That doesn't obligate you to do so, but uh, you know, if, if, if the commission decides that uh, rather than waiting indefinitely, which um, it can be problematic in terms of you know, notifying and keeping people engaged, uh, you know, one option would be to go ahead and see if anything can happen over the next two weeks and perhaps close the case or, or incur encourage the petitioner to withdraw their case until um, maybe there's a little bit more uh, consensus between uh, them and their neighbors. 
I can tell you, Matt, that I am not in favor of having an indefinite tabling of this petition. It's my understanding that there, we could have a motion here shortly for a two-cycle extension or tabling, at which time we can reconvene on it and see where it's going. But to have an indefinite table, I do not propose to go that route. Do you have anything else to offer, Matt? I may miss the. You were asking a question. Yeah. Did sorry, you have I anything was, else writing, you wanted? To, you're writing diligent notes. <laughs> yes. Did you have anything else to offer no. before I? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess um, I don't know if this will turn out to be a question, but this is really for the rest of the commissioners. I. I, I agree 100% on uh, an open-ended table indefinite is not is not what we want to do. Uh, we've done that in the past, and they seem just to kind of hang out there for a very long time and, and almost, I don't want to say get in the way, but it just becomes what, what's happening with it. Um, I, I, I'm inclined to make a motion. I'm not doing that right now, but I would, um, I guess, look for the input to the rest of the commission. If we were to uh, table this for two cycles, at that time, if it's not ready yet to go, um, I'm sure staff can extend or, or recommend that we extend that table for how much other time we would need, very similar to what happened with this first uh, public hearing tonight. Uh, at least by then, it gives us an update. I would hope that there would be an update by then, and we get a better idea of are these um, concerns from the residents being met and where, where exactly are they. Uh, and I think it would give staff a much clearer path to take with us and council. So again, I'm willing to make that motion, but I don't want to do it without getting discussion from the rest of the commission. I want to remind the commission that if we have a motion and it's seconded, all discussion will have to cease. So if there's any additional discussion at this time, we need to get that out of the way. Commissioner Lammers. I would also like to discuss the option of just withdrawing the petition. From what I'm hearing, it's just uncertain. Even in a month, um, the petitioner said they may not have an answer to anything, and that's two cycles. And so just from the, the drastic change um, that has happened and the uncertainty of anything, you know, what would the harm be to withdraw it and at the point that they're ready to come back with a solid presentation, we, we visit it then. What's lost in terms of um, money or communication or whatever if we choose to withdraw it? Staff, would you like to comment on that, please? Sorry. Would staff care to comment on Commissioner Lammers statement? Uh, no, I mean, it, it. it's an option uh, that petitioner is aware of um, as far as, you know, in, encouraging a withdrawal. Uh, it, it Staff doesn't feel strongly either way. <clears throat> Would the petitioner at this time like to make a comment, yay or nay, as to whether he would like to go for a one or two cycle uh, tabling as opposed to withdrawing the petition at this time. If you want to comment, I need you up here. I guess we don't have a strong opinion either way. Um, I did like the comment over here of the I-2. I just, as a person is looking at real estate, there isn't a lot of I-2. And I, that's why we were looking to, for this zoning change. I know it's it's probably easy to do once you have a pro proper or a pro specific project that you're doing it for. It's much easier to get approved. Um, I think by then we could in the next two cycles. But if we, we we'd be open to it either way. I don't think we incur a bunch of costs. There sh there shouldn't be much cost for us either way. Um, I in two cycle. I don't know that two cycles would hurt to wait. But I I'll get back to you. Commissioner Maynes, your lights on. Do you need oh. to speak? At this point, I would. I would be willing to accept a motion to table this for two cycles to allow the petitioner a little time. Then, like I said in my earlier statements, we could reconvene. 
and uh, at that time with staff and, and see where it's at. Commissioner Hepner. Mr. Chairman, does two cycles then put us into a January time frame? It'd be the mid-December, wouldn't it? 17. December 17. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> and we, and we, I'll just say we already have an agenda for that meeting, so any early Christmas or holiday break is probably not going to happen. Okay. Sorry. Well, I understand the nature of their business, and they are busy at this time. I, I totally get that. So I, I wonder, or I question whether or not two cycles would actually give them what they need if they're that busy. <clears throat> That's all I had, Mr. Chairman. That's fine. Commissioner Lammers? I'm just concerned on the two cycle. If they're busy now and there's a lot of uncertainty and we come back and afford them another two, you know, tabling for two more cycles, aren't we perpetuating an indefinite um, well, cycling? Not necessarily. I, I'm, I'm going to limit this. We're not going to keep doing this for two more cycles. But I want to offer the opportunity at this time to reconvene in two cycles and determine where we're at in the big picture. I think that allows the petitioner time to take a look at that. It's a month to take a look at his petition and whether or not he wants to try for one more cycle, two more cycles. But we're going to put a limit on it. We're not going to do this till the middle of summer. Commissioner Reinerts. Yeah, just one, I guess this is for staff. Is there any strategic advantage or penalty associated with withdrawal or um, continuing? I'd have to wait a year before requesting another rezoning. If um, if the re that is in the event that the uh, petition was denied ultimately by council. So um, that would be the advantage. Uh, he would not be subject to any uh, penalties. He wouldn't have to. He wouldn't have to wait to bring back another similar petition. So. Uh, if this went all the way and was denied by council, uh, he could come back with a different uh, re rezoning, say to C3, for example, but he couldn't come back with another petition for I2 for a year. All right, thank you. Any additional questions or comments at this time? Commissioner Tallman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will make a motion that we uh, table this for two cycles. I'll second that. The motion has been made and seconded to table this for two cycles, which would bring it back to us December 17th at 5 o'clock. Um, would let's do a roll call, please. Are you set up for that? Let's just do no, let's just do all no, skip it. All those in favor of tabling for two cycles, please signify by aye. 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 Opposed, same signification. Hearing none, this petition will be tabled for two cycles and will be back in front of us on December 17th. Hopefully staff and the petitioner and the neighbors can get together and work out some solutions. I appreciate your attendance. That would conclude the public hearing. We will move on to our regular meeting agenda. Roll call, please. Schneider's excused. Lammers? Present. Meds excused. Johnson? Here. Tallman? Here. Ingram? Present. Connell's excused. Hepner? Here. Bransgard? Here. Reinhardt's? Here. And Manus? Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. We'll start with report of city council activity. Nothing more to report. Thank you, Commissioner uh, uh, Matt. Secretary's report? Move the report. All the second. <laughs> All those in favor of the secretary's report is printed. Signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it will stay as printed. Report of comp plan, Matt? Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Uh, we
We have no zoning activity. We'll move on to subdivision activity. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. We have case P19-05 request of Jason McCoy for a preliminary plat for a 53 lot subdivision on 18.48 acres, more or less, located of the east side of Northwest Boulevard, approximately 725 feet north of West 46th Street, Ward 7. Staff recommends that the Planning and Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case P19-05 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the three listed conditions. And I so move. Case number P19-05 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Brandon? Hello again. Uh, we'll start a look at the, the zoning and land use, um, both uh, residential general and uh, it looks like a R3 residential uh, district, so everything lines up well there. Um, this is the preliminary plat uh, in front of you uh, for your consideration now. Um, as a comparison, this was the previously approved preliminary plat. Um, you can see that uh, there are several cul-de-sacs. Um, so the newer configuration uh, does have the benefit of um, not having any cul-de-sacs for more efficient uh, snow plowing and trash collection, so less, uh, less uh, burden on the, on the city to maintain. Um, there uh, will be uh, right-of-way um, is, is going to be dedicated um, to uh, as far as um, extension of, of uh, potential extension of, of Marquette in the future. Um, so uh, the uh, recommendation uh, is to accept the listed findings and forward uh, case P19-15 City Council uh, with a recommendation for approval um, subject to the listed conditions. I haven't had the opportunity to get out there Brandon. Is, is the extension of Marquette all the way to Northwest Boulevard, is that is that terrain reasonable to think that that could be extended? Um, I wasn't the initial uh, case manager on this, so I, I couldn't speak to that specific question. I don't know if Matt knows off the top of his head. But. I'll just say, uh, again, this is that there is, a, there is a challenge there, and um, this is uh, not only just from its uh, – geometry but it's geography as well it, it's a difficult property to work with uh, we're not in a position to, I'll say give up on the extension of Marquette Street but there will definitely be challenges if it was to move forward sometime in the future either short or distant thank you commissioners any questions at this time Commissioner Hefner Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you tell me, is the lot at the very top left corner of this, um, is that um, detention, or what is that being used for, and how is it accessible? I, if I recall correctly, it is, um, but the petitioner is here, and maybe they could answer some of those more specific technical okay. questions. Thank you. Sure. Commissioners, any additional questions of staff? Seeing none, thank you, Brandon. Yeah, thank you. Would the petitioner like to step forward and explain his project? Mike Richmond with Townsend Engineering. Um, I'm the land surveyor that developed the plat, and we have the owner developer, Jason McCoy, back there if you have other questions. Um, we are fine with the three conditions that can be easily met. The, prop, the lot in the northwest corner is kind of a leftover just a geometry so weird that we couldn't get it to work um, it was going to be platted as a residential lot there's detention immediately south of it but one of the conditions is to reconfigure Marquette right away to match perpendicular across the street so that lot is going to be changed anyway um, we may end up pushing detention on each side of Marquette there because the, it may not be buildable at that point once we change the right away geometry thank you mr. Richmond Commissioners, any additional questions of the petitioner? But you're okay with the conditions that staff has yes. um, provided? If it goes before council and is approved, we're going to 
next cycle we would put the final plat forward and he's hoping for a spring construction. Good. Okay. Thank you. I see no additional questions. Appreciate your time. You. Roll call, please. Lammers. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Tallman, yes. Hepner. Yes. Ransgarden. Yes. Reinhardt's. Yes. And Manus. Yes. Motion carries. I guess that concludes the uh, subdivision <laughs> activity. <laughs> Hello. Oh, All right. We'll move on to we have one item of future business come before us in a couple weeks. Communications. Are there any additional communications? Yeah, I'll add uh, as far as the um, well, I should say starting December 5th, there's going to be uh, some technology upgrades to this room. I'm not exactly sure what those will entail. I hope part of it will improve the uh, the uh, PA system because it is hard to hear. Uh, but and, and so this room will be out of commission for about a month. And as we speak, we do not have a home for our December 17th meeting. So uh, Bob, could you clean out the garage and I think Commissioner Lammers is is she 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 she's having Thanksgiving or Christmas. Why not entertain us? No, it, it, even worst case, it we, it may just be upstairs in a conference room. We can't. Uh, you, I believe we've met in the the police community room before. Right. That's not available. But we'll find we'll find a home somewhere. So we have our December third meeting here. Yes, it, uh, December 5th is when okay. uh, things well, will be shut down. The only reason I asked, when I was upstairs in, in the communications office, I was told all of December. So I just want to make sure, because I had told a few commissioners that this would be shut down in December. So I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Unless they've changed the schedule as, as of a couple days ago, it was we were going to be okay for the 3rd. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Any additional business? Seeing none. I move to adjourn. All in favor of adjournment, signify by aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you for your attendance and please drive home safely. <laughs>